This video explains how to install Lotus Foundations server. It's really easy to set up and only takes around about 15 minutes to get you up and going. So you don't really have to know a lot about what you're doing. Here we just press 1 and we see the screen comes up. So I'm booting just off a CD that I've put into my um, server. Now this is a virtual server which allows me to um, show you the screen and video it for you so you can see exactly what's involved. The server has um, two hard disk drives installed of the same size and it's going to allow me to either have them both running um, as if they are kind of one drive and write the data to both drives so that if one of them has some error you can just swap it out or it's going to allow me to run with all the data on one drive and have the other drive available as a hot backup drive which can be replaced and we can retrieve data and files off it if we so wish. So at the moment the screen's coming up and it's scrolling through a whole lot of things as it identifies um, things within my environment that I already have. Computers on the network, for instance, it might pick up um, a whole host of a whole host of different things that I'm that I'm running. So um, in this case, it's going to pick up my network and it's going to add itself onto that network. It just takes a few seconds to come up. Now it's asking me for a password because it's trying to work with something on the virtual environment that I'm running in, so I'm just going to go OK, you're not going to see that. Now we're at the stage now where it's, it comes up saying press enter to begin, I hit enter, and um, this here is just an, a message saying it's in text interface mode and that you need to use a web browser to configure it, so just go enter again. And um, here we have the server um, up and running to the point that we can now go to another computer and configure it via an internet browser. Now it's got here the name of the server, which again we can actually change that when we go to configure it. It's got a bit about the status of it, its IP address, and um, it's got an Ethernet port that's running, and the drives are okay and that kind of stuff. And um, so we can now configure it via web browser. So we need to type this address, HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, and the IP address and this port number into a browser. So let's do that. Okay, now I've already been playing around, so I've got the address there already. So if I just hit enter, you get this um, secure connection failed. Um, and it's basically all you need to do is create a, um, a um, exception for this. So you just say add exception, get certificate, let's go confirm security exception. And now I'm into the server ready to go configure it. Now these are licenses that you need to accept the terms of, one for Novell and one for IV, IBM. And then you get to create an administrator account. So here you're able to put in whatever user ID you like. So at the moment it's got root, which is typical for a Linux-based operating system to use root. So you can change that if you like, but I just leave the default. Type in whatever password you want to use. So this will be the user who will be able to configure the machine. Um, your domain name, so I'll put in my domain name. An activation key if you have one, which will um, activate it as a full product for you, otherwise it's just running in trial mode. Click on Save Changes, and click on Login, and it will log you in. It may ask you for a username and password, but because I've been playing around, that's kind of all been stored in my system. So here if I scroll down, I can see at the moment that the disk status needs to be configured. It's not configured. So there's various options. There's configured disks 1 and 2, all in a RAID. As I say, that will copy the data to both of them at the same time. We'd have disk 1 as a standalone disk, and disk 2 as a, um, as a backup disk. So in this case, I'm going to say to configure disk 1 as standalone and disk 2 for a backup. So I click on that. Go OK to any messages that may come up. And now if I scroll down the page and just click on Update Status, you'll see that the disk is being configured, disk configuration in progress. And after a little bit, you're going to see that change has got formatting the main disk, so it's 13% complete. So the disks have now been fully configured. If I scan down here, I see the primary disk number one is in standalone mode. We can remove the disk. We'll lose the data if that happens. We can add another disk to it if we want to. And the backup is um, all ready to go as well. It's all sitting there. 
and it's got a little bit more of other information here that we can view if we so wish as well. So now I suggest that we take the DVD out of the server and we reboot it. So I'll click on Reboot. I'll click on OK. Go back to the server now. You should see the server starting to go down and be restarted. Now, because this is a virtual machine, I can virtually take the CD out. So I'm just going to say that we've disconnected. <clears throat> and this will ensure that we're booting from the hard drive. It's rebooting now. And up it comes. Loading various modules into its memory. Loading the disks. It's initializing various things like the firewall. Making sure that they're running. And this console will actually show very shortly that it's actually running with some of the configuration settings that we put in. So now login. It's going to be root on this machine now. And the password is the password we can we don't have to log in at this point, it can just restart, it'll be doing its thing. Enter. So the server's by default called itself Haystack 8. It's got my domain name sitting right there. And it's got a little bit of information about the drives and things like that. And I can go through the various options if I so wish. But I just suggest we leave that there. And if I push it escape to go back, it's um will take me out of any menus that I may be sitting in. So I go back to my browser. And we've done our reboot, so I can click on return now. <clears throat> and it takes me straight back in. So we're now ready to do things like add users and um, quotas and set up email, those kind of things, which are very straightforward. But I'm going to do those in another video because um, I'm just making these bite-sized videos so that you can go directly to the various things that you want with them to watch something which is really long. So thanks a lot for watching my video.